my goodness. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Today is a beautiful day to be saved. Today is a beautiful day to be in Jesus. Today is a beautiful day to know where Jesus lies within your life. Let's take time to pray. Father, we come, we ask your blessing upon our time today. Together, Lord, I pray that you would so allow us, God, to share. Lord, allow this gathering, Lord, over the airways to be an opportunity, God, for life to be changed. Lord, I pray too that Lord you forgive me of my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness purge my heart wash my hands I desire clean hands and a pure heart before you in Jesus name amen what a mighty God we serve and I'm so thankful today because all the things that God has provided us in this time is for our good and for the thing good of kingdom and I pray that you today will allow God to do something miraculous in your life I pray you open up your ears and open up your heart for something oh, fabulous and remember last week we talked about revisiting the, the five DQs or the five daily questions and remember number one was what old behaviors can no longer be tolerated Number two was what new changes had been discovered. Number three is have I taken responsibility for my actions and moved on? That's very key. It's one thing to take uh, responsibility for your action, but you got to move on beyond that. Amen. It's called breakthrough. Do I have a good accountability partner is number four. And have I maintained a healthy perspective on my new beginning is number five. And we always end that with what your feed will grow and what your star will die. Just remember, though, because if you're asking yourself those questions every day, it challenges you. It puts things in perspective. Last week, I went over which each one of those uh, are, or were, but today I got to move on. Listen, I want you to know that Jesus needs to be a part of each and every one of our lives. And I've been asking the question, where is Jesus in your life? And this is part two. But I want to focus on who gives me strength. And that's a part of verse 16. But again, we have to understand something. Our inward and the outward facets of our lives should be governed by, oh my goodness, spiritual discipline. And we say spiritual discipline is following rules. Now, following rules sometimes is difficult to do, especially when you're a, a rule breaker. But we have to understand it's vital because rules are established oh, for uh, preserving life. Codes of uh, behavior is another one. And leading of the word of God because we want to receive the greatest outcome to our life and life more abundantly. And when we look at that, we have to recognize that spiritual discipline causes you and I to stop and pray. It causes us to stop and listen. But most of all, it provides us with the ability or provides us with eyes to see beyond the surface. It's one thing to see the superficial or the surface. But let me tell you something. We've got to get down into the depth. We've got to get down into what is hidden. What's below the surface? Listen, roots are below the surface. And you have a root network. It can travel a long way. Therefore, you have to recognize we want to deal with beyond the surface. And I tell you, spiritual discipline will, will create that. Because if you follow the rules, what you're doing is you're following the truth. Oh, and not a lie. Now, our foundation scripture. In our text, we're talking on, and, 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 and Paul is talking to the church at Philippi, and he's recognizing what they need. But most of all, they're here trying to provide something for Paul. I mean, and then they were disconnected, but now because through the reconnection, Paul wants to bring understanding what, to what transpired. And if you want to know more about that, just read the whole chapter of four. But I want to deal with verse 10 and 10 through 16. So verse 10 says, how I praise the Lord that you are concerned about me again. I know you have always been concerned for me, but you did have the chance to help me. Hmm. Not verse 11, not that I was ever in need, for I have learned how to be content and whatever <coughs> with whatever I have. Now, we're saying that you have to recognize that God has Paul. And because God has Paul, Paul can trust what God has in him. 
Therefore, Jesus is in Paul and bringing everything. Paul says, I, I didn't have a need, but you was going to provide. Oh, man, it's, it's, it's amazing. But I can't get stopped there. But verse 12 says, I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the secrets of living in every situation, mm. whether it's with a full stomach or empty, with the plenty or little. Oh, my goodness. If we all c could live according to those. I mean, I think about that. That is something that Paul is saying. Listen, I, I, I mean, I've been around the block more than once. Listen, I function the same way with the empty stomach or with a full belly. Oh, my goodness. He said, I, I, I mean, with plenty or little, I'm able to, to sustain. And it's because of Jesus. Oh, I love that. Verse 13 says, for I can do all things through Christ who, what? Who, what? Gives me strength. Now, I want to I I wanna focus on that because I want to bring recognition to how the things that God does and how he puts them in, in perspective, how they look. They look for what God is, I mean, for what he has done, what he's doing, and what he will do. See, I believe when we are in the word of God, when we are praying, we are fueled by the relationship. And life fueled by the word of God never experience emptiness. Listen, when you, I mean, when you are fueled by it, I mean, that means, I mean, when you go to the pump and fuel up, the car is, 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 is empty or getting there. So, you know, if you want that thing to keep running, you've got to put fuel in it. But let me tell you something. The same thing ap applies when you're looking at the word of God. When you put the word of God on the inside of you, the more you, they say the more junk you have on the inside, the more words you need to cleanse it. So the more word in, the more junk out. Why? Because the scripture speaks of he that hunger after thirst, he that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. In other words, you will never experience emptiness because the fulfilling, fulfill, fulfillment comes through the very word of God. Listen, lives that are not fueled by the word of God may result in anxiety, a lack of patience, giving up, painful loss of personal output, as well as an absence of social interaction. And I'm going to deal more with those next week, but I want to want to put those out there because I want you to start to think about some of the things that we ha have, like anxiety. And we talk a little bit about anxiety when we're talking about the, 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 the spiritual strongholds. But I'm thinking on the terms of how you and I must recognize that the inner man needs to be fueled by God. Oh my goodness, through Jesus. If it's fueled by God through Jesus, watch this. Emptiness is not an option. And when emptiness is not an option, then what you have is an interaction with the relationship you have with Jesus, as well as understanding there's more to what God is doing than it is <laughs> to what the enemy is doing. Sometimes we magnify the enemy because we have no relevance or we have nothing to hold on because of the lack of relationship we have with Jesus. Listen to me. Find out where Jesus is in your life. Know where he's at. Let him become a part of who you are who you have become. You see, Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And we said last week that was, I have strength for all things in Christ. Uh, I have strength. Oh, I have strength for all things in Christ. In other words, listen, God is a God that knows what your needs are, but he also knows what need you have for others to be in your life. And I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm a firm believer. We need each other. I said we need each other. And what God wants us to understand is he empowers us. Amen. For the ability to be ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses or feel inner strength into us. Nah, inner strength. I tell you what, God has assured me on many cases when I've literally given up. 
He fuel me according to the word. <laughs> I mean, the things that God through the Holy Spirit will remind you of. I mean, listen, we have testimonies. And I tell you, testimonies are something beautiful to have because it says that God can and will. There's nothing. There's nothing impossible for God. If there's nothing impossible for God, then all that is possible. You have to recognize and you have to trust God regardless of what you're going to the Think about this. Uh, Paul here puts in, in perspective. He says, I am su- self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. This should be our declaration every day. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. Oh, in other words, I, not only am I satisfied, <laughs> But the suffice of God or Christ in me has taken me above. In other words, my cup runs over. You see, our ability to go beyond our intellect when we go through Christ who strengthens is very key. For Paul was a, 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 was an intellectual guy. I mean, he was taught by the best. But he also was a Pharisee. But it was the power of Christ within him that gave him supernatural Oh, supernatural contentment or spiritual contentment, according to what I consider Paul's gladness and his happiness, because Paul spent a a lot of time in jail. He spent a lot of time in prison. He was in prison by the things that, I mean, he did on some occasion, but it was other things where God said, I need your time. Oh, I tell you what, if we allow God to imprison us, oh my God, some of us will will, will scream, we we will holler, but sometimes we need to be in prison to the things of God so that God can clean us. I mean, he can restore us. I mean, it's, uh, I mean, I believe uh, um, Paul's incarceration was a, t- uh, a time of being in a clandestine uh, 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 posture to help him for when his time was up. Paul then uh, uh, went to him and become, oh my goodness, an island. Well, that was a time where Paul went to all the places that he wrote to, and he he reaffirmed them. He encouraged them. He gave them something to hold on to. I mean, think about this. Paul knew where Jesus was in his life. Where is Jesus in your life? And I was looking at something. There are people that are out there looking for where Jesus is. And they're looking to you and I, believer. He's looking. Oh, my goodness. She he both are looking for someone that is bigger than I remember I told you um, David says Lord take me to the <laughs> to the <laughs> to the rock <laughs> that is higher than I in other words Lord take me to something that's stability that's greater than I am because if you do then I can rely on you all the more and listen somebody's out there <laughs> Gleaning and want what you have. Listen, it want what you have because, listen to me, you know where Jesus is in your life. We have a story in the Bible in John 3. John 3, verses 1, it says, There was a man named Nicodemus, a Jewish religion leader who was a Pharisee. Now, that's something. I mean, these the, the Pharisees <laughs> or something. I mean, you think about it. Pharisees, they, they were part of the Sanhedrin uh, Council. They were a part of those that, 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 that had the word. They had that which was, was to actually bring understanding to the Jewish people. Oh, the nation. What knowing God was about before Jesus came. And now they're struggling with the now Jesus that is that has arrived. And in here, Nicodemus, he was a, a Pharisee. Now look at look at how look at how it goes. In verse two it says, After dark one evening, he came to speak with Jesus. <laughs> After dark? In other words, he was a Pharisee, but listen to me. He wanted to know where Jesus was. He didn't want to, I mean, listen, let me say it like this. He knew where Jesus was on the outside, but he struggled on the inside with accepting him. And so what he just said, Rabbi, we all know that God has sent you to teach us your miraculous signs and evidence that God is with you. Huh? He recognized the acts, the doings, the service, 
but he couldn't accept the man. Oh, my goodness. Sometimes we want the blessings of God, but we don't want anything to do with God through Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Jesus replied and said, I tell you the truth, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, what that tells me is we have to know where Jesus is. Is from the uh, from the standpoint of if we didn't know him at all, we at least know where he's at. We know where the Bible puts him. We know where people preach preaching and teaching. We know where that. But most of all, what we're what God is doing is providing us with an opportunity for our, oh my goodness for our own personal relationship to grow when those things happen. <laughs> Think about this. Nicodemus knew of Jesus. He found Jesus. And now he wants to become a part of what Jesus because he saw what Jesus was capable of doing. I mean, think about that. Uh, uh, the woman with the issue of blood, she got tired of people talking about her. She got up and said, I want to see this man. I want to know him for myself. And all I got to do is touch him. Let me tell you something. All it, all it, for some of us, all it needs is a touch because you've been peppered. You've been I mean, you were sh you've been showered. I mean, there's people in your life that has been talking to you about Jesus. Well, now it's time for you to find out where he's at. You see, I believe it takes a new birth to find Jesus in our heart. I said, I believe it takes a new birth. In other words, he says, unless you are born again. In other words, unless you uh, let, oh my goodness, Christ in. And oh, you have to surrender. To become oh, a part of something new. Or you will stale. You become stagnant. You become stale. But when you allow Christ in. Oh my goodness. Everything becomes <laughs> afresh. A new. Any man being Christ. He's a new creation. Old things have passed away. And behold all things become new. What J Jesus was really saying. That he couldn't put it in perspective because he had to die and, <laughs> and what he was saying repentance is power repentance is power and when you think about repentance as being power it has the power and authority but uh, repentance comes from the inside it because it starts from the beginning it starts from something that has been created and listen he's saying listen or start afresh and you see as a believer we have to recognize our power and authority and because the recognition is in place, then we are given the ability to, oh, it's, it becomes a platform. And because it becomes a platform, now you and I can springboard off in the areas and see the different facets of our life that God wants to be a part of. Remember, last week I said, don't allow uh, God to be in this area of life and not be in that area of life. God, it's okay to be here, but don't don't go there. In other words, Lord, let's take time in the living room, but you stay out of my kitchen, all right? Now, but that's not who God is. God wants to be in every aspect of our life. He wants to be not a facet, but he wants to be, oh, in the midst of things. You see, a believer has all powers within them that they need. They have all power. Amen. You have all the Jesus that you ever need when you accept him. Now what you're going to do is recognize the more relationship I have with him, the more I'm going to grow in the authority that is provided. Think about that. You see, when you look at the adequate or the adequacy or that which <laughs> brings a satisfaction, you have to know from the standpoint that there are things in our life that we become satisfied with. And because we've become satisfied with, sometimes we don't want to move from it. But I'm telling you, if you let Christ live in your life and you know where he's at, listen to me. He'll never allow you to become empty or stagnant. He will always give you, oh, the power within to be, oh my goodness, adequate for the life's demands. Now, think about this. You can look at all the things that you have in life. And for some, we get excited. For others, it's a disappointment. But let me tell you something. When you have Jesus on the inside, those things become irrelevant to where you're going. Because you see, God begins to plant 
he began to 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 allow us to see the plotted out core that he has for us according to purpose and think about this life has a lot of demands and I, li I, 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 I like it because in my notes I said this life demand in the natural will cause us to search and seek new ideas and methodologies for greater outcome now that's that's key because some we have some of us are very ambitious but ambitious for what some of us are looking for 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 greater things for our life but for what I mean I, I thank God for my ability to see purpose for what purpose really is because now what purpose does is give me the ability uh, to actually see where God wants to take me and when I can know where God wants to take me then I have a pattern to follow I have something that that I can hold on to with confidence and have faith in it but not only that exercise my faith to accomplish it you see having Jesus on the inside is not like having the natural man and nothing else having Jesus on the inside helps us deal with the natural man God, are you with me having Jesus on the inside the Holy Spirit then will lead us to what has been established in us then we can oh my goodness we can say the new man now walks and talks and abides in me he that dwells in the secret place of the most high in other words there's a dwelling place when you start looking at how god and this the demands on our life i'm telling you right now there's so much that we have oh to compete with to cohabitate with to actually uh, make adjustment with on a daily basis if we don't know where jesus is in our life it becomes that anxiety it begins that giving up it becomes those things that we talked about earlier but listen to me when you have christ on the inside when you have something to work with oh my goodness what what a thrill it is that's where that 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 peace without peace that passes all understanding comes into play oh because it's guarding your heart and it's guarding your mind you see the scripture wants us to understand that what has been established by Jesus is something that we can hold on to and not have to grab a hold to anything else. Listen, the scripture says, Greater is he that is within me than he that's in the world. What is that saying? That greater one on the inside has become our authority. And listen, there's nothing on the outside that we have to compete with as long as we know on the inside God has done oh his work. Listen, I was I was I was 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 wanting to go so bad in last weekend but for the time's sake I mean I, for time's sake I just I, I mean because I, I'm excited. I really am excited about how you and I or addressing the Jesus on the inside of us or the Jesus on for those the Jesus on the outside and you're trying to say listen I'm not ready to give up my authority but let me tell you something Jesus is waiting for whatever you provide because let me tell you something there are things that you and I will have to surrender at some point regardless the scriptures say all knees will bow amen and every tongue will confess eventually. So my goodness, <laughs> I, I would want to do it for eternal life than to do it for eternal damnation. That's because I mean you have to do it regardless. But I was looking last week, and I would wanted to, to 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 really bring understanding to the greater one on the inside. Because let me tell you something: uh, the gra the strongest thing in the man is his will. If you got a will to do it, you're not concerned about consequences. You're gonna do that thing because why? It, it it provides you with satisfaction. And think about this, Paul. Paul, who was Saul at the time, <laughs> was a part of something that he took. I mean, he took and he took ownership of it and became own. And I, and I, I I'm asking you today to think about where are you. If you are a born again believer, where were you before you gave your life to Christ? What is a was it a crisis that brought you to Christ? What, I mean, was it a calamity? Was it something? Listen, sometimes we look and we don't we forget about where we were, and you when you forget about where 
you were, then you can't see where you need to go. But not only that, you can't carry anybody with you because you refuse to, to testify of what took place on yesterday. I'm telling you right now, Paul, let's look at something. Paul, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me say that without going in, in, in spiritual discipline. Say it with me, spiritual discipline. Let, 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 let me go and show you something that I, th- I think will bless you. Now, in, 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 in Acts 9, verse 1, it says, Meanwhile, Saul was uttering threats with every breath and was eager to kill the Lord's followers. You see that? So he went to the high priest. Wow. Wow. That's huge. Because it's showing where Jesus is at in Saul's life. And he's a Pharisee. This guy's a teacher. This guy's, I mean, he knew the word. He, I mean, no doubt he knew Isaiah 40. If you read Isaiah 40, it speaks of Jesus. <laughs> he, 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 this verse 2 said, he requested letter addressing to the synagogue, addressed to the synagogue in Damascus, asking for cooperation in the arrest of any followers, any followers of the way. And you notice it says in my, my Bible, way is capitalized he found there anyone in the way that he found there he went to bring them both men and women he did, i mean <laughs> he had indiscriminate <laughs> Amen. back to jerusalem in chains oh as he approached damascus on this mission a light from heaven sh- suddenly shone down around him he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Now you notice he called his name twice. I'm going to talk about that eventually, but not this week. Who are you, Lord, asked Saul. And the voice replied, I am Jesus, the one who you are persecuting. Think about this. Paul, you know, I keep saying Paul, but here in the text is Saul. And Saul here is questioned. Who is this? Because he didn't have Jesus on the inside. <laughs> He's quite, he said, who is this? Or to say, who has this authority to knock me <laughs> in a position where I'm, I'm not asking a high priest any longer, but I'm asking someone that has an authority that is shown or uh, is evidence that is there. You see, we all have been where Saul is in this text. We've been there. And my question is, is what were you doing before you let him in? Before you let Christ in? What you and I was doing? I can tell you this. If we look in Acts 7. I'm going to look at Acts 7. This is where Saul was. The Bible says here, and this is the story where Stephen is telling the, the, the Pharisees and all those folks, listen, you, you, you're not doing right, and you're not doing right because your forefathers didn't do right. In other words, this disherited, this they, they inherit some craziness, and they have an opportunity to get it right, and they refuse to get it right. And I'm just giving a summation, but that's what, but they got mad. And they thought, I mean, he was blaspheming. They thought he was saying things that were just totally out to lunch. And back then, if you, you blaspheme or you talk uh, uh, heresy, or you talk craziness, uh, I mean, they took you out of the city of stone. Now, listen, let me give you the, the let, me, let me give you the <laughs> uh, uh, Acts 7 account. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and they gnash at him with their teeth now that's that's that i mean when somebody na- back then that was that was that was worse than cussing <laughs> that, that was something <laughs> that was was not good i don't have time to go in verse, verse 55 says but but he being full of what the holy spirit gazed into heaven and saw the what the glory of god and Jesus standing at the right hand of the God. Oh, my goodness. There's things that you and I are going to be able to see as a result of where Jesus is in our life. 
Jesus has given us permission. Oh my goodness. Because he said, I'm the way, the truth, and the lie. Now think about that. In other words, he's saying, I'm not only going to provide your truth, but I'm, a, I'm going to provide you with life and eternal life. Listen, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe shall not perish but have everlasting life or eternal life. So watch this. Because you have Jesus, you're going to see, be able to see eternal things. And here Stephen is seeing Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father. Now, we're saying that what that says is because of his position he took with Jesus, now we're able to see God for who God really is. Now, with that, verse 56 says, and said, is this, he said, and, well, let me go back to verse, the part B of verse 55. It says, and Jesus standing, this is what, he's, what Stephen is saying. He said, and Jesus standing at the right hand of God and said, look, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Now, he's saying this out loud because watch this. Then they cried out with a loud voice. Listen, what I'm getting at here is when you have relationship with God through Jesus or when you know where Jesus is at in your life, you're going to say and do things. There are going to be things that are happening for you that the people are not going to get with or they're not going to accept, let alone recognize. I mean, you think about it from the, from the standpoint of there's things in, in, in your life right now that people are skeptic. People are not as optimistic. They're pessimistic. They, 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 they really don't know. They're trying to figure you out. Listen to me. How much more when you start to look at what Christ has done and what he's doing, people are not going to understand. People are not going to know why you want to be in church. People are not going to know why, man, the, why you don't want to listen to a so, uh, more bounce to the ounce, but you want to listen to something that, that's going to minister to your spirit. Listen, the scripture says these folks, cried out with a loud voice because they were hearing the truth. And they stopped their ears. In other words, they plugged their ears up. Amen? <laughs> like that really worked. They plugged their ears and they ran at him with one accord. In other words, they were all in cahoots together because the truth hurts, especially when the truth is going against a sect of people or going against those that don't believe. Amen? We're experiencing that like never before. I mean, our religious... Uh, uh, um, rights and whatnot are being challenged every day. <laughs> Verse 56. And they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses, look at that. And the witness laid down their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul. This is what Saul was doing before Jesus. Saul was, was being prepped. Not by believers or, or, or not by the, by the Pharisees and whatnot. He was already a Pharisee. But by his own intuition. By what he decided he was going to be a part of. This, I mean, think about that. He th they, they threw, threw their coats at him. So he witnessed this. He witnessed the stoning of Stephen. So he, I mean, he had a hunger for this. Remember I said, he had a hunger and thirst after what? Righteousness shall be filled. How much more we have to take in consideration. If we hunger and thirst after wickedness, hey, it's going to be fulfilled. Because watch this. <laughs> I was going to say birds of the flavor flock together, but I was thinking toads to a <laughs> But I was going to say, if you sow, it's going to grow. Because what you feed will grow. And what your star was that? I mean, come on. Saul had to begin to feed this thing. He had to see. I mean, I, I'm, I would be, I would be, uh, listen, I was, I, I could see Saul saying, hey, what was this all about? How, I mean, how does this thing work? I mean, it's, uh, hey, amen. Let me, I got to stay <laughs> The scripture says, the scripture says, says that their coats were thrown at the feet of Saul. This young man. It says young man. So he was young at the time. Now watch this. The scripture says in verse 59. And they stoned Stephen as he was calling on God and saying. Lord Jesus. Receive my spirit. 
receive my spirit. My goodness, you had to know where Jesus was in his life if he can say, receive my spirit. Now watch this. Verse 6 says, then he knelt down and cried with a loud voice. Then he knelt down and cried with a loud voice. Then he knelt down and cried with a loud voice. Come on. How many folks would be stoning? You getting stoned <laughs> and you kneel down <laughs> and cry with a loud voice. But listen to what he cried because he knew where Jesus was. Do not charge them with this sin. Who does that sound like? Who's that? <laughs> That's a familiar act. <laughs> who, who does that sound like? <laughs> sound like Jesus when he was on the cross. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and the Bible says, and when he had said this, he fell asleep. Now, here's a, here's a kicker. Because I says, said, we really want to focus on, on <laughs> with <laughs> who strengthens me. Jesus, the relationship Stephen had with Jesus, strengthened him in such a manner that when he was being stoned to death, decided not to blame those that didn't know any better who thought they did. Now, I like to say we need to start praying, praying that Jesus would kill them and start praying God forgive them. Are you with me? Or for that matter, <laughs> stop saying God kill him and start praying that God would save him, would go heal them. Because some people are doing things they don't have a clue as to what it is because they don't know where Jesus is in their life. And I believe this, and nobody can tell me otherwise. I believe that as a result of Stephen's prayer, Jesus, oh my goodness, Jesus was given, oh, an opportunity for a visitation because of what he knew Saul was going to take up because of what he, as a young man, was going to decide to do. I tell you what, the young folks in the church, we old folks have to give them a chance. They may not look like much right now. But pray for them. Give them opportunity. Because of where Jesus is in your life, you have the ability to pray Jesus before someone else's life. And I believe that Saul, Saul was a benefactor of Stephen's prayer. Because he was there. He was a part of he was a witness of those things that took place. And let me say this. You got to know that God, through his son Jesus, has so pla- prepared and, plot and planned for the time that you are going to be not only by yourself, but with others. And I'm asking God to move mightily to bring understanding to what it is that he's going to do as a result of who you become in his life. Listen, Saul, Saul. Life was changed because of what God was able to do, oh my goodness, to do through the prayers of someone else. Amen. I'm, I'm telling you, what a mighty God we serve. Let's take time to pray. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, I'm asking God for you to move mightily upon the people of God. Lord, I pray that as their lives are being changed and moved from faith to faith, that Lord, they will see the things that are are necessary for each and every one of them to be a part of what God is doing oh, in their lives. Lord, I pray that, Lord, you would so oh, miraculously move the blinders and, and allow uh, eyes to see below the surface, God, and help people that, Lord, are struggling with the lack of understanding, the lack of faith, Lord. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And I'm asking you who have given your life to Christ. To pray for those that haven't. And those that are haven't right now, I'm asking you, if Jesus is not huh, in your life, 
If you don't know where he's at, I'm going to give you an opportunity to, to find him today. So I want you to repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I acknowledge my sin. And I'm asking you to forgive me of my sin and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I believe your son Jesus died on the cross for my sins. He rose on the third day and with all power in his hand. And that power now is the authority that I am praying right now to become a part of who who I am and who I will become. Come into my life and make me whole. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, salvation, rescue, deliverance has taken place. And God is saying he not only loves you, but he is here to be with you and to take you to wherever you need to be because of who you become now. You become in Christ, a new creation. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. Isn't that a good thing? Well, let's take time to pray and close out. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, we ask God that you will so take us to where we need to be. Because, Lord, where we need to be, only you know. And I thank you for being in my life, being in our lives, being in the lives of those that even gave their life to Christ. But, Lord, I know that, Lord, you are God that cares. And you see everything that we need and everything that, oh, God, uh, a part of what we need. So, Lord, bless right now. By the blood of Jesus, give us, God, this day our daily bread. We love you, Lord. I pray, God, for our president. I pray for his family. I pray for, God, the military men and women and their families. Lord, I pray, God, for our, uh, our community, our first responders, God, our law enforcement, all, I mean, all those that, Lord, make up our community. I pray in the name of Jesus that, Lord, you will bless them and their families. Lord, we love you. We say thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to give a shout out to Trinetta. Happy birthday. Blessings. Mucho. May your day be marvelous. And all of you are, that are celebrating, I pray in the name of Jesus that you celebrate well and we celebrate you. Love you. In Jesus' name. Every praise is to our God and every word of worship and one of Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise.